ahead and call to order then. Um, Jenny, could you do the roll call, please? Reed? Present. Bentley? Present. Hayland? Present. Delaney? Present. Can't say Holly's last name very well. Much. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you have it on there differently. Look at it. That threw me. And then, <laughs> yep, Carcigen. Hello. Yep. Present. Um, could I get a motion to approve the August minutes, please? Motion to approve. Second from anyone? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, are there any audience items tonight? No, there's not. Okay, so then over to you, Jason, I'm assuming for the storm damage review. Yeah, um, I hate to keep coming back to this, but it was the big thing that happened since we last met. So I thought I'd give the commission kind of a rundown of what each park experienced and kind of a um, up to date of what's going on with cleanup and things like that. Um, so we'll start at Miller Park. Uh, we lost our park sign up there. <laughs> that was the big one. Uh, and then some light fixtures and light bulbs also went missing. Uh, those have been replaced and the park sign is currently being fixed. I believe we've still just got two giant poles up there, but that is coming. Uh, Kiwanis Park, same thing. We had some minor damage to the park sign. Uh, I believe that's getting fixed as well. We're getting the group discount on new park signs. Uh, Marina Cove Park, uh, park sign as well. Um, that one looked like something heavy got blown into it. <laughs> Not quite sure, um, but that one's gone too. Um, <clears throat> let's see, next was Leonard Park. No damage there. Um, obviously all the trees there are really tiny. Um, so nothing in terms of uh, tree damage and um, the gentleman on our public work staff that is certified playground instructor, he went out there and luckily all of our playgrounds are still very sound. So they were built the right way the first time. Uh, next, we've got 12 Oaks Park. Uh, there was just a minor tree damage there. Uh, Doc Simmer Memorial Park, a lot of tree damage there. Uh, that did all get cleaned up pretty fast. Uh, park looks a little different with some of the giant old black walnuts that came down. Um, next, the third in Davis Street green space. Um, tree damage there as well. Um, there's a reoccurring theme, you can tell obviously. Um, at the sports complex, more tree damage. And there we actually had some damage to our dugouts as well. So on field one and field two, uh, the closest uh, to 415, um, there were some panels blown out of the wooden dugouts. Um, those have since been replaced. Uh, they look brand new. Well, not brand new, Josh can attest to that, but they've <laughs> they are functional again and they are dugouts again. So I was happy that we were able to get that fixed up uh, pretty quickly. Uh, also, one of our bleacher units met its demise out there. It got blown around quite a lot. So right now we're working with insurance to, um, with the insurance adjuster uh, for that claim. Uh, and the last one is the town square. Um, obviously, anybody that <laughs> was in town during that storm um, that drove by saw how bad it was. So a lot of tree damage. Uh, the bike aid station on the northwest corner, the bike rack on the northwest corner um, got smashed when the big tree came down. So we're working with insurance on those. Um, and then obviously the square looks a lot different now with the trees down. Um, but you know, I, I just wanted to say from Parks and Rec and from this, just the city staff as a whole, you know, anybody that came out that day, I know Ashley was out there. I know Kelly and Kirk Kalen were also out there. It was, it was an amazing response. So we were very, very fortunate, very small town to see those people coming out um, and helping clean up the mess because it was a mess. Um, that's kind of a, a very quick recap. Um, does anyone have any questions about particular parks or anything that you saw, whether it was volunteers or any, any word? <laughs> 
Back up at Miller Park, any issue with the uh, shelter there? Nope, nope, that is still good. looking good. Um, the the water tower, you know, right next to there, their fence took quite a beating. Most of it ended up in Miller Park, but uh, nothing of ours really got it there except for the park sign. So, um, yeah, I think just the trees all around probably took a, enough of the wind up there that mm -hmm. our shelter was left unscathed. Um, hey, if there's I nothing else on five, um, sorry, Ashley, was there something there? Yeah. Um, on the square on the northeast or northwest corner, there's still that, I think it's a maple tree that's like half taken down. Are, are you talking about the giant monster? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have two yeah. questions about that. Okay. Number one, is there a plan for it? And yes. number two, is the plan, if the plan is to take it down, I have an idea. Right now, the plan is there have been a lot of individuals in the community that would like to financially <laughs> help make that more beautiful. And um, there's a lot of traction for some sort of tree carving uh, okay. to, to take that, to take its place. Um, Ken Morse, the, the tree guy here in town, said that as is, uh, if we cut the top off a little bit, you know, and it, it looks pretty haggard up top. Uh, we can expect that stump to remain safe and upright for about 15 years. At that point, we would have to remove it and probably sink it in cement in another place around town uh, if we did do some sort of carving with it. So right now, th that's kind of where that's at. I know a lot of folks have reached out to the Polk City um, Foundation as a 501c3. They could accept the funds and then gift something to the city um, in the terms of a carving. Uh, the city's just not exactly set up to accept that kind of money without doing an RFP and things of that nature. So, so yes, there is a plan and it's, it's, it's moving slowly, but there is something going on there. <laughs> I just, I didn't want it to just get cut down and then like tossed out. Like I, I talked to a good friend. Um, I make kind of rustic tables out of epoxy and wood. And I had a friend who said, you know, that would be cool. You could make four or five tables and then sell them. And then the money could go back to the city. And I thought to myself, well, that's cool. But something tells me someone has a better idea than that. So I was just curious what all those ideas were. <laughs> oh, no, we, um, yeah, the, the, the day of cleanup, you know, we had people you could just hear them chattering like that would make, be a cool totem pole. And I was standing next to our public <laughs> works director and I was like, yeah, that would be kind of cool. So yeah, I mean, that's kind of one of those unofficial entrances into the city. It's like, welcome to the square. So yeah, there's a really cool opportunity for a neat piece uh, to go there for a while. So I would hope we, we weren't just going to jump at that. We, if, if we were going to do that, we would spend some time getting, public input on that and developing a plan, not just taking the first thing that comes along. Yeah, sure. And we're, we're finding out that more people want to donate than we ever thought. Um, so yeah, we want to do something where those folks that do want to help financially do feel like, you know, their voice and their ideas were heard. Um, yeah, of yeah, of course. So um, yeah, we, we won't jump in and you know, buy something from the 99 cent store, Steve, we'll, we'll do our due diligence. <laughs> well, and will that be through uh, the Parks Commission or who will that be through? Yeah, I think we will bring ideas through you guys. Um, initially, they're probably going to be brought to probably Bridget at the, at the chamber. She just, a lot of folks take their ideas, problems <laughs> to her, uh, fair or unfair. Um, and then, yeah, I, I'll get roped in as well and so as we hear ideas we won't be shy about sharing them with you folks and yeah well jason i, I think you should be very involved in it because it is after all a park sure and, yep. <laughs> uh i i think if anybody's going to be guiding anything it should probably be the parks and rec director i don't <laughs> know how anybody else feels about that but i just think we should have a position in this well i mean the city's gonna have final i mean it's city property 
right? So it's a part to your point, and we'll have, I think, the final say. I think right now, what Jason alluded to with, the, it's always more cumbersome. If, if the city has to bid it out, then you've got all the, you know, red tapey crap that we have to go through to do it. And I think there are a lot of ideas, and I think at this point, just kind of letting that manifest and see what comes, and then, uh, but you know, unquestionably not, I mean, it's city, like I said, city property and it's not gonna be done, you know, haphazardly or without a, a decent amount of thought. No, and I wasn't suggesting that. I, I was just, you know, we waited a long time to get a parks and rec director. And um, Jason obviously would have great ideas. And I, I just think that because it's a park, we should probably be um, having some input into it through Jason. Yeah, no, I, I'll give you a beautiful piece of artwork to look at. I, I promise you that. Um, no, some good ideas have been tossed around um, and nobody's shy about telling to them to me when they find out what my position with the city is. So no, it, it'll be really neat and yeah, it, it'll be done right. And it, it'll be something to be proud of there on the corner and when folks come into town. Absolutely. Um, with so, that, um, can I move on to six or does anybody still have some points for five? Just real quick, I know you talked about volunteers and I don't want to agree with all of that. I, I would be remiss if I didn't give uh, some sort of kudos to staff. Um, I, I think how this storm was handled um, was just first class here. I don't think anybody possibly in the whole, and I said this in the council meeting, nobody in the maybe entire storm path had the options that Polk City residents had, and probably a few non-residents, if we're being honest, um, in terms of, you know, what they could do on the uh, recycling. And then uh, Mike was all over uh, getting a wood chipper out uh, there um, and getting the, the pickup set up. Um, a lot of, I mean, Des Moines still doing that. Ankeny's still doing that. West, they're still cleaning up, and, and we had that set up so quickly. Uh, my Jason uh, was down at the the square. I think an hour or two after, right? most of the uh, um, gawker in me died um, in my time in the fire department. But a little bit came back after the storm. I had to go see the. Uh, the square as soon as I heard there was damage down there and lo and behold who was there Jason um, and he was there the next day with those guys so um, from from Chelsea on down to everybody in public works they just handled it so so professionally and um, I just wanted to, to say that again here. Yeah and one more thing I, I, I'd, I'd be really remiss if I didn't mention this that um, total quality um, uh, with with Charlie Husack, I believe. Sorry, I'm still new to town. I, I believe that's who owns it. Um, he had a crew come out and help our public works guys, and they did it entirely pro bono. So that was that was a stand up move there, um, and that really helped us get through the parks a little bit quicker. So um, yeah, thanks to Total Quality for helping out there. Oh, I think that's something that needs to be made public knowledge. I had no idea about that, and I think that that would be. I mean, even just a, a social media shout out and thank, thank you, I think would be important. But um, I know they're always looking for um, feel good stories for like the Polk City news magazine that's put out by the Des Moines Register. You know what I mean? The Polk City Living magazine. They're always looking for feel good stories. And um, I know one of the comments that was made was um, a feature article on um, the silent good of 2020. You know, we've all heard of like the negative things that are happening um, in and around the area and all of the things that people are struggling with, but that could be a really great option to throw out there for something like that so people know what's going on. Yeah, and, and I'll certainly reach out with him and see maybe what they're comfortable with in terms of publicity on that. But yeah, that would be a great idea. We, we need all the feel good in 2020 that we can get. Um, all right. And, and uh, no, because staff didn't want to do, Charlie, I, I think, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jason, but he told Mike, he just do it and, and don't make a big deal. So 
but I think you're right, Ashley, that deserves a little pushback and, you know, he can be magnanimous all he wants, but the people do deserve to know that. So but just to let you know, it wasn't like staff just expecting them to do that and not wanting to do anything. That's how early kind of put it. Okay. Um, all right. So number six here is um, our capital improvements plan, our, our CIP for 2020 through 2025. And on some of this, I, I may default to Rob a little bit, just because I know this entire process started um, before I was here with the city. Um, so next Monday's um, council meeting, it's gonna be a public hearing uh, for this proposed CIP. So this will be also our capital improvements um, projects for the next five fiscal years. Uh, it includes projects and equipment purchases and to be put on this, it has to have a value of 15,000 or more. Um, so I would say after the council ranked everything, the parks and rec guy in me was very pleased with how my department came out. Um, so over the next five years, um, I have 11 products identified and one equipment purchase. So those projects range from uh, parks, you know, you'll see that Lost Lakes phase two, is on there would be an example. Um, studies are also on there, um, kind of trail studies uh, for the connectivity of Polk City. And then the last one is trails. Um, obviously we know there are large gaps in our trail system and the next five years, it's gonna be a whole new town. It's gonna be so walker friendly, biker friendly, it's gonna be nuts. Um, so yeah, and then the one equipment purchase um, will be it really helped me out in my programming endeavors um, would be a 15 passenger van. So that'll help for small child camps, um, or just youth camps, uh, senior trips, um, things of that nature. And from what I'm told sometime last year in 2019, it might've been quarter two, quarter three, this commission was tasked with some sort of brainstorming. Um, and I think that's kind of some feedback that the council took into it. Um, Rob or Amy, I, I don't, does anybody want to talk to that? Um, yeah, I don't remember the exact timing, but I, so for those of you that maybe it goes back to 18, quite honestly, but uh, there was a exercise that, that, you know, I don't think I was the liaison at that point. Um, I remember watching it, but exercise of sort of prioritizing the, um, the parks and, and with, a, you know, this could be a whatever. Um, and, and so that was the basis for a lot of the parks related items that we talked about. So a couple of things I would say to that is one, it, it was, I don't wanna say dated because that implies that it's it's out of date, which it's not, but I, I do think that, that maybe bears some revisiting, um, you know, in a formal way from this group, but, but I don't know. I mean, that's, I'm always looking for more feedback than last, not that I don't wanna, you know, make it sound like what we have isn't good from the parks perspective, because I think it, it is, but, um, so yeah, it, it, Kelly, you had to have been, Josh, am, am I close on the dates there? Yeah, I think we, we worked through it a little bit in 18 and a lot in 19, we kind of finalized it and we prioritized all the different parks in town and what uh, improvements we wanted to see in it. Um, I'd have to go back through my old notes, but I, I want to say Lost Lake was at the top with adding playground equipment, and then it came to 12 Oaks, uh, adding a trail around the, the pond, adding some white rock up against the pond, uh, some signage, and maybe even some picnic tables or uh, another shelter place like what's out at Kiwanis. Um, and then we just kind of prioritized down from there. I want to say Doc Simmer was in there as third with um, mainly just like a, a shelter to do an outdoor picnic with maybe like a, a grill that, that is permanently in place. So just some stuff like that is what we did Josh, I'm, like a year and a half ago. I'm really impressed because I just pulled the minutes from December of 2018 and you hit them <clears throat> exactly. Lost Lakes oh. concept as designed July of 2017, 12 Oaks pond work, sidewalk signs tables, and third Doxima Memorial Park picnic tables. 
Good job. Nailed it. <laughs> you did nail it. <laughs> I would add, though, that I, I mean, first, that when we did that, most of the current members weren't on the Parks Commission then, so revisiting, I mean, all of that, it would be helpful from that component, but also just, I feel like when we did do it at that point, we weren't approaching it from like the world is your oyster. You know, we had um, a limited number of options to choose from at that point. So for whatever that's worth, I don't know, you know, if you have a five year capital improvement plan, I'd be interested to understand how that works as far as adjusting over time might be good for us to know. Yeah, so so to that end, I, I maybe take a little bit of liberty with my liaison role here and give you my perspective on this. Um, more in depth or maybe more than I should, but um, so what I would ask is, so this is important thing. We were so far behind. I mean, this is an annual thing that we hadn't done ever, right? So uh, like up to be honest with you, one of the low points on my time on council is the look that I got from Don Sandor when uh, he asked where's, when our last one was and, and me telling him we'd never done it before. So um, it, it's, it's been a long time coming and, and the, the quality of work that I think is in there, it, it's a lot. I mean, it's, it's 106 pages, so it's a lot to consume. Um, but there is a really, again, a lot of good detail and both in terms of, you know, what it costs to do and the things you'll find out why they haven't been done because of what it costs to do some of these things. But, um, uh, and, and then a plan to do it. You know, we've always had a priority list and informal one, but now we've got a, here's, here's the list and here's what we're going to do year by year. So, but my ask to, to anybody and, and especially to this group with an increased focus on parks would be to spend some time with it and then say, look, you know, you've got whatever park, whatever on 2023 and, and, that needs to happen sooner than this, and here's why. Because when we were going through, and, and again, I don't, I should probably give a little bit more insight into, Chelsea prepared a lot of materials. We had a, a, a few different works. I shouldn't say just say it was led by Chelsea, but everybody prepared a lot of materials. And we ranked these individually and then collectively um, came back um, with the, the collective ranking and then kind of talked about them more, some more. and. Um, did what we could to try and get as much done in, in a steady interval pace with the tax base that we have. But what's hard to do from a macro level looking down is say, I live on Tyler and this thing that everybody else has that we don't have and, and sort of put ourselves in a specific neighborhood with a specific need. And so that's where I think this next step of the capital improvement comes in holistically with the town to, to look at it and say, yeah, it's nice that you have a plan for that, but, you know, number 43 needs to be moved up, and here's why. Um, but to, to Amy's point, some of the things, and, and so having that same look at the parks, where if the world is our oyster, and, and after the next five years we have all these things, does that meet all of our needs, and what gaps do we still have? Um, now, I think... I know we have the community visioning on the table, so I don't want to get into that yet, but that that adds a wrinkle to this with all the things that are going to be coming out from there. But nonetheless, I, I really, look, I, I know people need another 100-page document to review like they need a hole in their head, but I, I really would love to have a bunch of eyes on this and some perspectives. Um, I'm really looking forward to the, the public feedback portion of this. One, because I think there will be some excitement that we can have definitive dates on, on some of these things that we can do. Uh, but also, um, I think it, it, it needs to, we need to be reactive to that to a certain degree. I know I'm probably falling pretty rapidly down the list with Chelsea of ranking council people because she put a lot of work into this and revisiting that creates more work for her and staff. But um, I, I do think it's something that um, bears some discussion on. So to your point, Amy, long-winded uh, roundabout answer, um, I think um, that in a lot of cases there are, 
like Lost Stakes is pretty straightforward in, in playground equipment and a few other things, and, and we'll see some options with community vision. But I certainly think there's the opportunity in, even if you agree with the schedule, to tweak how that schedule rolls out and what form it takes with X Park, Y Park, on down the list. So I'm just looking at the, the plan, just open it up and looking at it for the first time. Does it go into details on how funding is going to come for some of this stuff? Yes, so that document, uh, I'm assuming, did you go to that link that I included in the agenda, yeah. Josh? Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, so um, the latter part of that document breaks out year by year, project by project, and it does identify a source of revenue. Um, so yeah, you would have to go into a specific project number uh, to get all of those finer details, but they do exist in that document. There's individual pages the last... I think it's, well, the last big section, uh, and, and some of that will answer the question where it, it is, you know, general, uh, from the general fund, or, or some of the things are specifically tailored to a year because we've already got a grant um, on some street projects, but um, there are, and that's another thing too with community visioning, and I want to jump ahead to that, but as those recommendations come through part of what community visioning does is identify specific grants and those things and that obviously you know it changes changes things dramatically yeah, almost 10 million listed for parks alone so that's pretty impressive over the next five years mm -hmm. i uh i feel supported as the director and i hope you guys do too as our commission so no, I, I think our city leadership definitely values uh, Parks and Rec. So, no, like I said, I, I was very pleased when I saw what what of mine got kept for five years. So, no, I, I was pleased. Any other questions or comments on the capital improvement plan? All right, Steve, do you want to give us a community visioning update? Well, let me just ask Jason, first how he wants this to go because earlier he had talked about walking through the slides which show the the pictures of the things that community vision has come up with so i i don't what do you want to do jason if you just want to go through that document that you sent jenny and i um like we said a couple minutes per slide if you can do that um hey, did, did you upload the slides i can or you can share your screen i have it set to either way you prefer well, I, I think you should probably up, we should go to your screen because I don't exactly know how to do it. Okay. And then if you can turn it over to me, then I could click through them. I, I think it only, I don't know that I can, I, let me try. Can you all see my screen now? Yeah. I. Steve, you may for simplicity's sake, just say next slide. Okay. When let, you're done. Let, yeah, there are several slides here and, and I don't want to, uh, talk a lot about each one but so let's just do it that way Jenny okay so uh, overall this begins with the transportation inventory which came out of the uh, surveys and the focus groups which if you, you can see on the right there our focus groups were youth the steering committee the active recreationists and then older adults and those were the old and the, um, the youth were broken down into two different categories, I think 13 and above and 13 and below or, or something like that. So, so that's overall what led to the transportation inventory and what you're going to see. So next, next slide. Okay, and so again, these are the things on the very left-hand side that the community visioning group came up with as their focus areas, the trail system, signage wayfinding, community beautification, safety, and year-round recreation. So those are the five, five areas we've been working from. And next slide. And um, again, this is, just, this is just another way of saying what I just said. So you can go to the next slide. Okay, so this is, this is one of the things that um, the community visioning came up with in regards to the trail system. 
you're looking straight down at the intersection there between City Hall and um, the pizza shop. And then across the street from City Hall, you're seeing um, a lot there. I think there are four round green trees and a parking lot and, and stuff like that. So the concept, um, we, we talked about developing a trailhead for uh, bicyclists. And so this is one of the concepts that they came up with. Um, you can see that there's a place for some um, off street parking across from the city hall there. And then there's the, um, uh, also the area where there's, I believe restrooms and a shelter and then a trailhead area with some, where there would be some out, outdoor seating. The bottom picture shows you that intersection there that plays off of the City for All Seasons logo with the bicyclist, the skier, the sailboater, um, so forth and so on. And then you see the green um, stripe there at the bottom with the bicyclist on it. That is something called cycle track. And that is supposed to designate a place where cyclists could ride their bikes. And if you look up above, you see that cycle track runs down Third Street in front of the city uh, council chambers there. And then all the way down, if, you, if it extends all the way down there to the corner, that would be Broadway and, and Third. And that's called cycle track. So the proposal would be to remove those parking um, stalls where that cycle track would be. And instead of having parking there along third, it would be cycle track for bicyclists. Is that clear to everybody? Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, cool. it is. Next slide then. And um, so the only thing that I will call attention to on this slide really is up in the upper right hand corner, you can see that cycle track from where that intersection where City Hall is down to Third, and then that extends all the way down Third Street to uh, Kiwanis Park, where it would intersect with the multi-use trail, which will eventually take you all the way up to the technology park and to Hug Drive. So I just wanted you to see how that, um, how that flows. Um, so let's go to the next slide, please. Okay, this is a, a concept that we came up with to, it was clear to the committee that the square is the focal point of our community. And so um, one of the ideas that we talked about was repeating that concept in, in connection with community visioning. And what you are looking at in the top right-hand corner and the bottom right-hand corner uh, is a huge, 30 foot um, structure shaped to look like the bandstand. And what's unique about this structure is that bicyclists would be able to ride through the structure. And then around the inside of the structure, you, we could see, if you look down below there in the right hand corner, you can see on the inside of the structure, there are some panels. We would use those panels to repeat the theme of uh, City for All Seasons, um, we would also potentially use one to put a map up that shows um, how to get to all the various bike paths in Polk City, which will be particularly useful as we begin to connect things. And then up above on the right hand side, you're looking down straight down at it so you can see you can see right through it. There are even some park benches in there that people can stop and sit in because it's a huge structure. So very quickly, where this one is located right now is over the Neil Smith Trail, down by the um, recreation complex. That was considered as a, a potential um, high uh, viewership, high introduction to Polk City. Um, and it, that trail, of course, is, is highly used and it's, it's a way to, to build upon an existing trail and try to help develop um, more trail. And then there's also some existing, some trail that you can see goes along Bridge Road, which would bring you up to Parker. So there are a lot of things going on uh, with, this, with this 
unique design. And I will tell you that um, I did talk to uh, Eric, who's the landscape um, designer working on this project and asked him to repeat this entire concept up at the technology park to serve as an introduction to Polk City because that's potentially where the high trestle trail connector would come into Polk City at the te technology park. So he's working on repeating this kind of this exact theme up there as well. Has the Corps of Engineers been engaged on any of this stuff since it's technically their land? Yeah, they have been engaged and um, the Corps has had, um, did come back to Eric with an idea, it wasn't necessarily this idea, but it was an idea for bringing the trail um, through uh, from the existing uh, Neil Smith Trail into the recreation complex. So they, they came back with a suggestion for a very short trail, but really no comments on building a structure over the Neil Smith Trail. Um, yeah, the, the, the only thing I was going to say was we've just received feedback through Little League and stuff that they're pretty hesitant on anything around that storm water or anything that could push more water into that storm water. Not saying they can't, they won't do it, but that's just, you know, when we've had conversations, they're like, that, that's been kind of a, a point for them. Yeah, and these are all concept drawings, of course. And uh, w w so there's work to be done by community visioning yet. And we'll, we're taking comments from community visioning members right now on these slides, and we'll go to the next steps from there. So I, I think everyone's aware of what, of what you're saying about that so we'll see where that uh, where that mm -hmm. can lead so next slide real quick Steve, while you're going to the next slide i just kind of wanted to piggyback off of what you're saying i actually attended this meeting so i was able to listen to the presenter talk about these slides firsthand and one thing that he continued to reiterate was this is not a planning session. This is not an organization session. This is not a problem solving session. This is a brainstorming of a dream session. And he just kept reiterating that he realizes that long term, there's going to be a lot of logistics that go through. There's going to be a lot of other parties that are brought in to make decisions. But if this was a perfect world and community visions was the only people living in it, this is what the potential is out there. And if the dream doesn't start big, and if we start with just obstacles at first, then we'll never get bigger. So Josh, I will tell you that I was totally the person in the meeting that was like, well, what about this? And what about this? <laughs> like I was totally that person. And finally he like literally interrupted me and was like, this is, this is a dream. You know, this is the pipe dream. You got to let it be big and huge and then cross the obstacles once you get to them. So as Steve continues, there's probably going to be some other things that you guys are like, whoa. But I thought it was a really good point that he made. Yeah, and, and I was going to add to, uh, I was in the same boat as Ashley and probably more the skeptical. The first time I saw that picture, I was like, oh, that's, that's pretty. But there is no way in a million years the Army Corps is ever going to agree to do that. But and, and, and he's right, like th this isn't that meeting, but at the same time, if we're ever going to get the Army Corps to, to finally be a good neighbor, community visioning, I think, will be a tool to do that where they can come in and instead of, you know, this small municipality asking them to flex on their bureaucracy, they can leverage examples in other places and, and really push back in a way that we've not been able to. So. I share your perspective, Josh, and 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 um, but I really hope using this, just like Ashley said, as that visioning. You know, obviously to, not to use the word to define the word, but to to allow us to come up with something and then you know have a partner to help break down some of those walls that we've been dealing with. But again, fully empathize with you know the years of weathered and being beaten down in your voice there. Uh, I'm, I'm totally with you and hopefully we can move past it. So the slide you're looking at now is we talked a lot about signage and wayfinding. 
the, the overall goal is to, to try to ultimately direct people into the um, town square uh, area. And so in the middle of the picture, you can see some proposed signage, uh, kind of the lollipops on the far left, and, the, um, and then using the Four Seasons uh, theme, and then also you potentially using and repeating the downtown bandstand theme as well. Uh, and then the pictures up above at the upper right are of some existing signs. And I think the overall goal of this is to try to begin bringing things together so that we have a consistent look. Because, um, you know, are, are we going to have brown signs with green on them? Are we going to have blue signs? Are we going to have black signs with blue on them? Are we going to have stone signs, wood signs? What are we going to do? So this was just an effort to start thinking about how we might develop some consistent signage. And, and this is drawing board stuff here. So if you go to the next slide, I can, we can build upon what I just said on this slide, because it's not only to develop signage, but it's to develop site furnishings and plantings that are all, and trees that are consistent with our overall theme. And you can see the, the various, how the, park, the, the entrance and the park signs were kind of changed there uh, in the pictures. Up above is how they are and down below is with some plantings uh, around them. Because I know beautification is, is, a, is one of the key elements of community visioning. So, and then in the middle you can see the site furnishings there and stuff like that. Down below there, that the um, horizontal picture that is that concrete wall on, um, as you go up Third Street, um, South Third there from downtown up toward, you know, Bridge Road. And so it, it, it was viewed by the landscape architects as just kind of a blank canvas. And what could we do with that blank canvas to kind of repeat our theme, you know? So they did winter, spring, summer, fall. It could be, bicycling, skiing, um, boating, all four of those things. This, this was just an example of what we could potentially do with that concrete wall that exists there right now. So uh, you can go to the next slide if, you, if you'd like to. Okay, this, we talked a lot about streetscape safety and um, Broadway and Parker were two streets that came to mind uh, frequently. Broadway, because it, it already has a, a bike path along both sides of it. And I think the landscape architects were trying to figure out a way to kind of develop a trail along, a separate trail along both sides of Broadway so that people on their bikes didn't have to ride along the edges of Broadway because it's so busy. And so that's what the West Broadway Street uh, design is. You can see the trail off to the side. And um, then the Parker Boulevard, um, a lot of people, including my wife and I, use that very frequently to get from our home in Lost Lakes to the trail because we don't like to go down below and ride over all those bridges because it's very hilly. So the discussion point was turning the sidewalk along Parker into a multi-use trail. And as it turns out, we do have um, enough property along Parker to actually expand the size of that sidewalk into a multi-use trail. And although this one looks, shows the trail on the Leonard Park side, the actual discussion was to have it on the um, other side of the street so that there were fewer driveways and streets to cross over for bicyclists and then being able to take it all the way down to Parker, all the way down Parker to Bridge Road with one long multi-use trail. So that's, that's kind of what that is, the two areas that that is showing. I don't know if you have any questions about that. If, if not, we'll move on. 
So this is a document that um, we thought might have some potential usage for the Parks Commission, because as you look at it, what the um, landscape Arch architect team did was they went and evaluated every park and those are listed along the left hand side and then up above they looked at all the amenities in each of those parks and they x'd them off if that amenity existed so like if you go halfway down to lost lakes park you see lots of zeros there's there's really um you know nothing at lost lakes park now but as it develops uh some of those x's will be filled in so um, we just thought that was kind of, that wasn't even something we had asked for. That's something that we got. So we thought that was uh, kind of cool. and might have some potential use by some other committees. Uh, so that's that slide. We can go to the next one if. All right, so this is the South Third Street Park. Um, so the upper left, upper right hand side um, is where Davis Street is. So that's coming from Bridge Road and then it, it curves and on the upper left hand side is where you go down the, down the hill to the downtown area. So there were lots of ideas for this uh, park and um, lots of really good ideas about things that people identified through our focus groups and survey research that they think we ought to have in Polk City. And uh, not only that, but then people who also came uh, downtown and gave us their comments when we had our, we had our deal, uh, our planning meeting downtown on the square. So just from the, the uh, left to the right, that big round circle is, is just kind of a, a big natural open area with lots of nice trees and uh, a space for lots of things to happen. Down below it is some parking. There's, um, if you look at the very bottom right in the middle, there's already a street that dead ends on that park. And so the concept was to utilize that street and bring people in for some parking along there. So in the middle, we again repeat our theme of our bandstand. And you'll see one of those bandstands is, is I believe it's an, an amphitheater, a potential kind of amphitheater and um, the bottom one might be restrooms and stuff like that. And then off to the right is an open area again where um, there would just be a lot of free space down below it. Potentially it would be a dog park. Over to the right would be a skate park. And then right hand bottom corner would be um, a place for an ice skating rink. Because again, one of the things that the Community Visioning Committee envisioned was year-round um, park usage and opportunities. And so this park goes from summertime, skate park, outdoor area to wintertime and ice skating rink. So this was just a, a way to uh, bring some people's ideas in. And if you look on the very top right side, you see two photos. That is that hill on the as you go down to the, um, the downtown area. And right, th right now, the hill along Third Street, right now it's just a vacant hill. And if you, behind it is like a house and some trees. The landscape architects uh, came up with the idea of putting Polk City there uh, as a way to remind people where they are because the thought about this park is this is really a signature park for the city because this this street is very very heavily traveled by people coming into our city and going through our city so lots of ideas there again it's just concepts so if no questions there we'll move on to the next one i think this is what ashley was uh maybe referring to when she was saying, wow, this is a lot of stuff. And uh, she's right, it is a lot of stuff. We all agreed it was a lot of stuff. This is Lost Lakes Park, uh, if you can believe it. Uh, but um, Eric, the landscape architect, um, said that he turned his student loose on this park. 
and his <laughs> student kind of went crazy with this park and identified lots of different things. But I think overall the concept is um, to have playground equipment there in the, in the park. You can see up in the top right, he threw in a tennis court and then an outdoor gym and a volleyball court. And um, there is a splash pad and people like the idea of a splash pad and some restrooms and maybe a shelter in the playground, but probably not parking and lots of trees and, and stuff like that. So there are pieces of Lost Lake that, um, you know, that people are already talking about, the playground being one. And I know that's in the uh, CIP plan for um, the next fiscal year, I believe, already. So... Um, that's what Lost Lakes could potentially look like. It's probably not ever going to look like that, but uh, that's some stuff. I don't know if that's our last slide or if there's another one. Is there another one? Nope, that's the last one. Okay, so that's the last, that's the last one. So, so where do we go from here? Uh, basically, we're getting uh, input right now, and if you have input, please, you can, you're free to send it to me or um, I, I sent the slides to Jason. So if Jason, you want to send the slides out to everybody so that they can, they can review them, that would be great. And then we'll be taking all of that input to um, further develop our ideas. And then um, the next thing for us to do in October will be to look at all the opportunities we have for funding these ideas. And then we'll also be looking to have some kind of a public event so that because the landscape architect will develop big display boards for us of all these concepts when, when we're finished and we'll show those concept plans at this public event. And then in November, we'll reshow all of them at the Trees Forever annual meeting. So we are beginning to wrap up the first stage of this because the next year and following years will be trying to implement some of the stuff that we're doing and trying to find money to support what we're doing. So with that, I think I'm done. So Rob, how does anything? implementing some of these coincide with Jason leading the parks versus the commission? You know, how, how does that all play together? Yeah, well, um, so I, I think as I have read the uh, CIP plan, there's a lot of crossover um, between what is in that plan and what community visioning is doing. So again, I think community visioning is, is just an opportunity to put down on paper in a way that we've not quite seen before, some of the opportunities we, we would have for developing our parks, for developing our high trestle trail connector, and then uh, utilizing that as, you know, as sort of a, a starting point for some of these things that are in the community improvement plan. Yeah, so I, I would just to expand on that a little bit, Josh, I, I think very similar to our discussion that we just had about the tree on the square, right? So right now there, there's ideas kind of all over the place and, you know, and Bridget is vetting the, the tree thing. Community visioning is bubbling up a lot of ideas and, and similar to, like Steve told me, we asked to, to put a park in Lost Lake and they put an amusement park in Lost Lake, right? I mean, it, it's, <laughs> is it going to be all of that stuff? Probably not in any of or, or our kids' lifetimes. But the, uh, the value is the, you know, two or three things that we got to pull on or that we didn't think of. Um, but the ultimate decision making still goes through Jason, still goes through this commission, same as it does everything else. I, I'm hopeful that it becomes a little bit easier when people can see some of these things and get behind them. And then, like Steve alluded to, you know, help connect us with some funding. So, you know, it's pretty easy to say yes to something when you don't have to pay, for, right? It's, it's, exactly. or, in, or you don't have to pay for all of it. So I'm, if, if and I don't mean to infer your question, but 
this this commission hasn't been supplanted by community visioning. It's it's just a, a I think a, a catalyst for a lot of the things that you know. One of the first meetings we had on it was with um, a number of people and and Kathleen um, who works for Snyder, her engineering firm, um, was on the committee that did it in Woodward. She's like, there, that's you know, we're we're 10, 12 years into their past community visioning that they did, and they're still working through some of the stuff. So it just generates all these things that still flow through the same channel that that they will. I hope it it speeds it up, it makes the ideas better and and kind of gives a, a little bit new and and you know basically free professional expertise or, or opinion on some of it too. So it adds add some color. And again, I don't want to in, infer too much, but if you're concerned at all about this being a roundabout way to circumvent the normal process. I don't think it's that at all. It was never designed to be that. We want to work together. I think I would just add that something that some of us have talked about as on the Parks Commission is at least since I've been on it, we really haven't used the Parks Commission for some of those things. So lots of times, like I mentioned, we get a list of things to review, but we didn't, we have no idea where the list of things came from, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And so it's just a point to be made, you know, as we figure out how the system works together, because I get that there's tons of new things going on. There's community visioning and there's Jason and you've got your CIP plan and all kinds of things, but just that that's hard for us to navigate through is how did we get these three things and you know what do we do with it it is and and you have no idea how I, I, jason i talked about this but i'm so excited for him to start and literally it's like jason started covid's here like the same time right so it, it, and i know we talked about this before and and, and i and i wish there was a better case study for me to reference whatever, eight months in we are to, to Jason's tenure, but I, I still do think that this commission has a, a completely different function than it had before. Mm -hmm. It's gotten the way, you know, it, it actually referenced the underlying, what did you say, underlying good, but we still got to deal with the overt frustration of 2020, right? So, and, and just, I guess, hang in there. I know this has been frustrating at times to, you know, who's doing what, when are we going to get to do some of these things? And, and I, I really believe that, you know, whether it's Lost Lakes or whatever the next big thing is, there is, is going to be the opportunity for this group to put their fingerprint on. And I, I know I'm excited to have that rather than what we had before. And, and so I don't know that answer the question directly, but I know that yeah, it's, good. I think we'll, we'll get better and, Again, he's been tremendous in dealing with the hand that he's been dealt with, with the timing of all this stuff. But I, I think it's going to take us to a completely other level when whatever version of normal we get after this gets done. Yeah, I think we've all seen that path or bits of it on the meetings too. So thank you both for working on it. Um, anything else on community visioning? Questions? Okay, thank you very much, Steve, for going through all the effort of sharing that with us. We appreciate it. Um, all right, reports, anything from the council, Rob, or anything additional? Uh, no, I don't think. Sorry, I missed the last meeting. Um, hopefully, Dave didn't spoil you. I tried to tell him to temper it. And, um, but um, I, I don't think there's been a ton um, over the last couple of meetings that have come up that's super relevant obviously working on a few things trying to figure out the best way to continue with meetings like this or or a version of in person and I know staff's working on that but um, a lot of places are are in the same sort of there's a few communities that have had uh, commission or committee meetings uh, in person but don't think we're quite there yet they're they're looking at some options um, Trying to think of other things that we talked about the last couple of months. Nothing's bubbling up. All right. Thank you. Is there anything else for staff reports, Jason or Jenny? 
Uh, yeah, so Ken Morris, um, as you might imagine, August was a sad month for trees. Um, that was pretty much it. Um, he did mention, though, with kind of a, a catastrophic event like this, we might be seeing a lot of grant opportunities coming up for tree replacement. Nothing like that has been set in stone. Nothing's been advertised, but he just had a hunch that something like that might be coming in a good opportunity for us to maybe replace what was lost. Uh, from the public work side, again, tree cleanup. Um, the bands on the square and the Kiwanis Shelter House have both been reshingled. They both look pretty darn sharp. And uh, the Historical Society steeple, that has been getting some work done on it. There were some rotting boards kind of at the base that needed to be re that needed to be replaced. And last week they had started in on that project. Today is my first day in the office since last Thursday. I don't know if they finished while I was gone, um, but no, that process had at least started. Hopefully, it finished with the turn of the weather. So, I think that's all I've got on the city side. Thank you. Anything else from the commission? I guess, sorry, Amy, one thing I had after Jason brought that up, but I talked to Ken too, and one thing that I would pose to this group is in asking him, so yeah, Ken said the same thing to me about um, uh, about an opportunity for, for different state or federal or whatever it ends up being programs to plant trees back. But the other thing too, that he mentioned too is uh, the Arbor League, so the, the him basically and a few other people uh, they've got a lot of expertise, but they don't have a lot of young bodies, and that's that's his term. I'm not, you know, calling anybody old or anything. But um, so I think doing one of the things that he mentioned was was sort of a, a membership drive for their group, um, and, and that's something that uh, um, I think we talked about a little bit as a city um, helping with that. But but certainly, you know, if if any of you are interested or if you talk to people, um, that's something that I think would be. That, I mean, what the Arbor League has done here is uh, nothing short of outstanding. And um, if they can get more, you know, legs and arms to help do some of that, obviously that would help too. So I'll just put that out to this group as well. Thanks, Rob. And Anything? just a quick question. The, the capital improvement plan, is that public? Could that be shared or is that? It is on our website as public already. We are wanting everyone to share it with friends, neighbors, whatnot, so that the city can get input, so that we can include that as part of the public hearing that's coming up. Perfect, thank you. I have something, um, and it's, I'll keep it really short, but, um, and I just, it probably doesn't ring a bell or like even go through anyone's head when I say this, but you know, I volunteer uh, my time to do the square um, with the flowers and then I landscaped in front of the horse horticulture building this year and I was just kind of thinking and I just thought to bring it up with the, the parks um, mission here uh, and it kind of makes me think about creative visioning too because you know we I've had some issues with being the only volunteer to do it and Sometimes I get frustrated because, you know, I did basically everything for free, but then, you know, it's not taken care of. And if we can't even water a hydrangea outside <laughs> the city hall, like how are we going to take care of anything in Polk City, you know, that we put in, like plant-wise? Um, so it's just a frustration a little bit that I thought I'd bring up that, you know, um, yeah, I, I use my time uh, to to do that, but then it's not taken care of very well, and you know I don't have the means to water things. You know I don't I don't really want to bring buckets of water from my home, fill in my Jeep, and dump it on a plant. Um, so I just thought I'd bring that up. I don't know if there's some like when we do put these things in, is there a way to get it watered better? Um, you know, like the city spent money for me to put those plants in instead of the, in front of the historical building. And I know not a lot of people look at it all the time, but, you know, I, I do. And to see like certain things die, I'm like, wow, that was $100 of city, city money um, down the drain. Uh, 
for those plants to die. And so I just thought I'd throw that out. You know, I usually keep kind of quiet about it, but <laughs> I, uh, it is a little disheartening. And then I kind of wonder, well, if we do go ahead and put other things in in the city, is it going to be taken care of? That's it. <laughs> the short answer, Holly, is yes. Um, obviously, um, with the City Hall situation, um, I know, I'm, I don't want to speak for Public Works, but I know there was a miscommunication on which Public Works person was going to be taking care of what. Part of that, I don't want to blame COVID, but the Public Works guys to do social distancing and all that fun stuff were working four hour, ten hour, four day, wow, I can't even talk four 10 hour days. So they weren't all overlapping. And so <clears throat> there was some miscommunication, but I know that Mike and his team are aware of it and mm -hmm. we're making things to address it. As far as big plantings or, or some of the community visioning big picture things, <clears throat> those would be set up very similar to all of our parks with the automatic sprinklers and things where there's timed and it's not a matter of human error and whatnot. So um, yes, someone will be taking care of them, the whom I'm not sure. Yeah, and I don't wanna cause a fuss. I just thought I would bring it up, you know. Um, I walk by the plants every day. I, I too was like, what's going on? So I can take my little picture from inside City Hall and take it outside City Hall <laughs> But we have hoses and things, so yes, I, I, I think we'll get it all taken care of for this next planting season. Yeah, okay. Anything else for tonight from anyone? Could I get a motion to adjourn until October 5th? So we'll move. move to adjourn until October 5th. Second. Okay. I second. Lots of seconds tonight. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Well, we'll see you all on October 5th. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you.